Here's my story about a time I encountered discriminatory behavior in the workplace, specifically ableism and ageism. One of my former employers maintains a brand narrative touting cooperation, reflective learning, and taking initiative despite obstacles, values that give it a competitive edge relative to other companies of its kind. While I have no doubt that this company, as a whole, endeavors to sustain such principles, I had, unfortunately, bore witness to several instances of discrimination in my department that were rather unexpected. One such instance had to do with a palpable discord between some of my colleagues who were, like me, newer and younger staff, and a veteran webmaster who was considerably older than us with weight-related health problems. From my perspective as a writer, she demonstrated quite the aptitude for building and optimizing websites that would render features functional and content navigable, as well as capturing critical data that would service staff and clients alike. Her expertise notwithstanding, she was willing to take courses and adapt to new web design best practices in her spare time. She acknowledged that she needed to keep abreast of developments in her field. Whenever I spoke to her, she not only shared her wisdom, but also friendly support when I needed it. She was more than just a co-worker to me, and I'm grateful that we've remained in touch with one another to this day. The others, however, were less receptive to compromise, correspondence, and self-reflection. The experience felt less like a team collectively weighing our options based on the insights we each contributed, and more akin to fulfilling a checklist rooted in the options prioritized by one or two members. The webmaster was under much pressure. Being forced to implement tasks that she knew didn't guarantee efficacy slowed her down, and trying to reason with our colleagues meant that she would be branded as difficult or unreliable. She was usually punctual and cooperative, but she gradually expressed disinterest in the job. The team began alienating her from our projects, electing to somehow resolve the issues themselves. They would also criticize her behind her back, citing laziness and incomprehension as the causes for her supposedly lackluster performance. Little did they know that she suffered from depression and anxiety, both of which added to her already deteriorating health because they were not patient enough to heed her advice or trust her instincts. English may not have been her first language, but she never struggled to understand our conversations. It became clear that her needs and concerns weren't being considered, and given their dismissive attitude, she didn't think telling them would make a difference. I urged her to speak with Human Resources and our union steward about switching departments, as there were many other workers I knew who enjoyed collaborating with her and appreciated her companionship as much as I did. Should her efforts to reconcile with her group prove unfruitful, of course. And that she did. Now, do I believe that professionals who are unaccommodating can grow out of this mindset? Absolutely. More often than not, people simply don't realize how they may come across because they're accustomed to habits commonly accepted at work that actually invalidate those who are otherwise proficient employees. Unlearning exclusionary practices through education and subjects such as mental health, disabilities, and improving communication skills can help transform a rigid structure into a more accessible environment for our peers. Thank you for tuning into my story, and let's make the inclusive workplace a reality.